Now that is a manufacturer who's starting to get it. Hello and welcome everybody. Josh RV Nerd with Bish's RV and behind us is uh, another Sunset Trail brand I haven't been able to get my hands on a lot, but the ones that I've touched, I generally like what they're doing. They're a manufacturer who, they're, this floor plan is certainly similar to some other things that you see out there, but what they've done is they've really paid attention to a lot of consumer feedback and they've wrapped that stuff into their product. Uh, so sometimes it pays not to be the first builder of a floor plan because you get to see where the other ones maybe missed a little bit and you can swoop in and kind of fill that void. That's what I feel like this one did here. So like there's a lot of builders of a layout like this over the years. I think one of the more popular is like a Grand Design Imagine 2500 RL, but a lot of people, that one has a rear sofa and a dinette in the slide across from the TV. And a lot of people said, man, it'd be awesome if it had a dinette in the back and your, your, like, your sofa across from the TV in the slide. And that's exactly what they did here. And it's very similar to like a Cougar 25 RDS, but it's got a couple little tweaks. Like I really like the free floating folding leg elliptical base table that comes with this because it allows you to pull that table over in front of the sofa for Dinofa mode. Uh, you can obviously use it for dining. It folds into a sleeper. You can use it outside like a picnic table. It makes one thing do four things. And that is so, so important. And useful in camping. These have a solid extended season weather package. Everything's real push button easy, push button stabilizers, awning, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can get a very respectable almost 400 watt solar package that includes a 2000 watt inverter on these, which is kind of cool. Uh, the RV has a walkthrough middle bath, which maybe some people won't like, but it keeps the whole thing shorter. And you're getting effectively like a super slide sized RV under 30 feet, which is sometimes a little bit difficult, not impossible. Um, there, there's a bunch of other really good things like the bathroom on this. They actually gave a storage in the bathroom in the middle that so many manufacturers don't. The little things that I look for as a person who goes camping, generally speaking, they nailed this thing pretty well, but it's got maybe a couple things that maybe you won't like and I'm going to point out those two as well as like a couple little fit and finish kind of flaws I want to be as fair as I can as we go through this and if you appreciate that approach make sure you hit that subscribe button and let's get going now I want to begin by saying while I don't necessarily want to like I don't think this RV is necessarily perfect in fact I, I'm going to point out a couple potential flaws or defects or something like that as we go it it's very good they they did a very good job listening to consumer feedback. So again, a lot of manufacturers will put a sofa on the rear wall because it allows them to build the RV shorter and lighter and save some cost. The trick is when your entertainment center's up here, you don't exactly get a good shot at the entertainment center from a rear sofa like that. So what they did here is, um, again, very similar. The, the, I think the most similar, most comparable thing out there would be the Keystone Cougar 25 RDS. And I definitely have video footage of that. Check the links in the description if you want to see some similar floor plans. But take a look, you know, go through this one first here. They put the sofa straight across from the entertainment, which just makes a lot of sense. Now, you could swap that for a hide-a-bed. And remember, that big, like, eight-foot-long rear dinette? That is very guest friendly as it is. So like you could actually have four adults in here with only the uh, the front king bed sleeping two at a time. You could, you know, potentially sleep up to six in here uh, if you're doubling up on a hide -a bed and the rear dinette, which gets a little tight for sure before you even start doing something cute like putting cots on the floor or anything like that. Now you may have noticed how the dining table uh, is free floating. It has an elliptical base which means if you want to fold it down and use it like a coffee table here in front of the sofa, you want to use it outside like a picnic table, you want to use it like extra kitchen prep space, you could, and that's not carpet. That is a marine woven floor. Um, I do prefer it when the slide floor and the main floor match. What's funny is that flooring is actually uh, in the slide is a higher grade than what's actually in the main floor. So uh, even though I don't find this as, as aesthetically pleasing, I do think it, it, well, I don't think it is a higher grade. Um, the RV is very pet friendly overall too. No floor vents, uh, you know, for or anything like that. Just easy cleaning. Now that's a 10 plus cubic foot, uh, 12 volt compressor fridge. And I like how they included a pantry in the slide. It's those extra little detail features like that, that they're doing here that not every manufacturer does. I think overall, they just really nailed the package. Now our sidewalls are laminated. So putting outlets in those is tricky, or as they would say in Lord of the Rings, tricksy. But you notice how they put some outlets over there in the kitchen with, uh, I, I think that that's probably going to be an awesome little appliance corner. Like 
you know, coffee makers are the first thing that always comes out of my mouth, but like air fryers and stuff. Like we've got a Ninja air fryer at my house, works great. By the way, for those who were not aware, I'm, I'm finding that a lot of people, like there's people like, oh man, I wish an RV had an oven. I hate convection microwaves. Do you not, I, I don't think people realize that a convection microwave is an air fryer. Convection is what it was called for years. And all of a sudden some marketing genius realized that if you put the word fried, in it, you can convince Americans they can have fried food without the greasy, oily fat. It's it's a, con anyway, so sorry, I'm, I'm on my soapbox, I'm off topic there. TV on this one though, again, directly across from your sofa seating. And when you sit down, you realize one of the other good things about this one, the window coverage is fantastic. It, it's not as obvious because like on the back wall, you see a giant window, but over here on the door side, you don't necessarily see as many viewing windows N nothing big from the outside but when you sit down combined together like drops in a bucket i think they add up pretty nicely now one thing i'm wondering about we'll keep an eye on this when we check out road mode i think you'll still be able to get to that converter uh, can converter nope not frankfurter stupid converter fuse panel couldn't decide what i wanted to say right there so new nerdism was born the converter um I think you'll still be able to get to that in case you need to play with your fuses, uh, you know, when the slide's closed. Now here, instead of adding a little bit of extra storage, they went with the fireplace, the electric heater. Um, I don't know, what do you think about that? Also, they uh, a lot of manufacturers will angle off the countertop like this versus square it off. I am, yeah, and I know why they do it. Oops, sorry, I'm running into the bathroom wall. When you're standing here, it makes the whole RV look and feel bigger and more open. And it makes your entry look and feel more open. But I kind of like the squared off countertop space, but that's just me. I don't know. What do you think about that? That's just, again, my nerdy little take on things. Now we're going to see there is storage below the dinette. I do wish there was a way to access that stuff from the inside, but you do have to kind of peel everything apart. It, do, it, it does not have the exterior junk in the trunk storage system either. Now, these outlets, it's nice that they're back here, but they are up really high. So I think what I might do is kind of use it just like a, a phone shelf. You know what I mean? Use the top of the uh, the window valance as a bit of a phone shelf to kind of maximize my function there. And it's funny, from the outside, sometimes you see ladders over a window and, and it, it, like, it looks terrible. But on the inside of the RV, until I point it out, I wonder if you even noticed. Leave me a, let me know, did you even notice the ladder before I mentioned it, you know? Now up here, I've got this just flat turned off. Oh no, I don't, it was turned off, but it's, I, I thought it was, it was in motion mode. So there you have it. We got kind of a, a little bit of a two for one. Um, ooh, one other neat little detail here before we start checking open the, uh, all the checking open, opening all the storage and checking out the details. I, again, I can't talk. Um, yellow stickers imply that uh, those uh, outlets are wired to the inverter loop. So if you get their advanced solar package or if you want to add an inverter one that already lacks it, uh, you, you could get those outlets running off pure battery power. But remember, you will chug your battery harder doing that. The TV though, notice how it pivots around. So if you do feel like lounging at the rear dinette or kind of splitting the difference a little bit, you could have a bit of a conversation corner back here. Um, and it works. I think, it, it, to me, it works very well. Now, there's only two options of, available on this RV. Uh, three, I'm sorry. You can get the solar package. You can get a two-way gas electric refrigerator instead of the 12-volt, although you're going to lose about 25% of your capacity and it, it cools slower, but it uses less power if you're boondocking. Um, and a second air conditioner. Uh, and there's a lot of manufacturers who make a floor plan like this that don't add second AC. I'm pretty sure this one does. Uh, a lot of manufacturers will limit that based on size or length or something like that. I'm pretty sure Sunset just goes, you want a second air? You live in hot climate country? You can have one. If I'm mistaken on that, I, I do apologize. If that's a really hot button critical item for you, you may want to call our team here and we can uh, double check all that for you. And again, storage below the dinette, uh, the, the table, uh, you know, obviously free floats around. It does have storage above the dinette too. However, no sort of struts or anything. Now, if I, I feel like if a manufacturer is not going to put struts, would you prefer if the door swung open or would you rather have them like this or would you rather have the struts? I don't know. Also, what would you think about if they extended the overhead cabinets in like a wraparound U shape kind of above the entirety of the U dinette? It would make for some tricky corners to access, but I, I don't know. I, I'm... 
I don't know that I dislike that idea uh, either. So there's a the thing. Now, we're moving back here into this walkthrough middle bath, which keeps the RV shorter and gives us a big bathroom. It does mean, though, that if someone's using the bathroom, it does kind of cut the camper off. But this right here, that is a massive chunk of storage that normally walk through middle bathrooms just simply do not have to offer. Now, like many, frankly, most RVs, if you want the bigger vent fan, you're going to have to do some kind of upgrading. But that's one of those things, you know, you can also kind of put that on us. You can say, hey, uh, listen, Bishes, if you want um, a business here, maybe talk to me a little bit about upgrading the bathroom fan. And uh, let's see what that kind of turns out to be like. We can do that stuff. You know, be, you don't have to do it aftermarket. Just let us know what you need. Great space around that toilet, though. That was a very, very nice surprise. And pardon my dirty footprints here in the shower. Um, th this bathroom is a little more narrow than some of the other ones because they, they cheated the bathroom uh, a little bit in terms of length, and that's where they got the extra length for the pantry in the slide. So they're robbing Peter to pay Paul, but I kind of like what they did. And the headroom in this with that vault, it works well. Uh, now, one of the more recent things that Sunset Trail has updated to is a tankless on-demand water heater. And you can see that control uh, right there with that big red button just above the yellow sticker telling us that's an inverter prepped plug right there. Overall, you know, it, if you don't like a middle bathroom, a walkthrough bathroom, you're not going to like this. But if you're okay with it, I personally, I like what they did. Now, up front here, this bed does feel very bossy because it's a 70 by 80 uh, king. There's no factory swaption for anything else, but you can physically replace this with a 60 by 80 queen aftermarket. The, uh, the the wood platform under the mattress just needs to get shaved on the sides a little bit, and then you're queen capable. Good to go. Um, oh, yes, there it is. So I was curious about the, the second air capability. These are 50 amp. There you go. There is your second air prep on this one. So it is confirmed second air capable. A lot of brands, again, this size don't even offer a second air option. I also really like their headboard power pocket action. Not just the fact that they have them, but that extra shelf in there, it's super handy. I think the only way I could make uh, be a little happier with it is if in that shelf up by the power outlets, they had one of those like quarter size little holes where you could run like USB cables through or something like that. But I I don't know. I, I feel like that's starting to get really picky. I'm pretty happy with it. By the way, um, from where I'm standing currently, wh what we're facing, there are TV uh, outlets directly behind us right now. So the bedroom does have TV hookups. I just haven't flashed my camera. I want to talk about this though. Normally you'll hear me not be a fan of no window in a door, but this is a bedroom. Bedrooms and bathrooms, I don't mind if there's no window for privacy, especially when I have this over here. Now, this door is going to be very important when it comes to travel accessibility. So when you're not using it for travel access, if you're freaked out by a bedroom door, remember that is a dead bolting door. So you can, you know, when you get to your campsite, you can just shut that down and you can maintain uh, some privacy. Um, Taking a look at the uh, the bedroom storage here, you've got your dual hanging wardrobe cabinets, which is great. You do have overhead and closed cabinet storage, but again, you have the gravity auto drop uh, kind of doors on those like we saw above the dinette. There's storage below the bed, of course, as well. But um, let me actually walk back up here a little bit. Between those overhead doors, there's that dead pocket. I sort of wish that was a third door because there is storage in there and you can kind of have to do the elephant enema, reach in and, and, and feel around in the dark until you find what you're looking for. Now, I mentioned there was a couple little glitches and defects I saw, overall nothing major. And this is a result of the hot uh, climate that we're experiencing today. You may notice how that piece of trim on that wall bowed out a little bit. It, uh, it, it just, it got warm, it expanded and it popped out. Now we can fix that and we will fix that before it leaves, but uh, it's a thing that happened, and if I see something, I say something. I want you to get uh, as you know real of an estimation of this as I can possibly provide you. Now, in terms of travel access, this has what I call two-stage access. Now, the, if you feel like the refrigerator door opens the wrong way, standing here, it feels like that. When you're in the kitchen, it opens, I think, correctly. You just gotta make sure you're not, uh, you know, whopping who's ever sitting at the theater seat with the uh, the, the freezer door. But the thing is manufacturers who build the refrigerators, they build the doors to hinge on either side. So if you do want it to open the other direction, if you want the door to swing open toward the pantry, toward the bathroom, you can do that too. But what I'm demonstrating, pantry, refrigerator, drawers, sink, 
countertop space, and of course, the rear dinette along the rear wall. This is very travel stop friendly if you want to, uh, you know, stop and make yourself a little, uh, I don't know, like a, like a Diablo sandwich and a Dr. Pepper. Name that movie. Whereas this front door uh, leads us up into the bedroom. Notice too, they did the, the full stable steps on both doors. So um, some people like them, some people don't. I, I don't know that I have overtly mentioned that uh, up to this point. So there, I guess I haven't been outside either. But the front door, if you need to take a nap or take a crap, she's going to be the one for you. But the uh, living room door, that's going to be for your snacktastic action with Kung Fu Grip. I also think this is uh, a good fit for a lot of late model tow package, half ton kind of towing. Uh, if you notice, you know, it's about 30 feet and it's fully maximum loaded, which this thing also has a very respectable cargo carry capacity. We'll get to that in a minute, uh, but fully max loaded under 7,800 pounds. So that leaves you plenty of motor if you got something a little more late model, fairly capable to, uh, you know, be able to merge onto highways and stuff like that. Simple, basic, but water docking station over in here. And right above the single sewer outlet, you know, it's kind of nice. It's only one. You see that black circle on the wall just in front of the slide out. That is a cold water higher pressure spray port. That is a really good location for one of those. And they were able to pull that off because of the extra storage they put in the bathroom. Cabinets allow the ability to kind of hide um, plumbing, basically. Something, uh, it's, it's an unsung benefit of cabinet construction a lot of people don't think about. So how is the weight of this thing so freaking light, dude? Well, people who didn't ask, I'll tell you. This is one of the very few RVs out there still doing a six-sided aluminum cage. So, you know, like you got your laminated walls and stuff, but like the front and rear wall, the roof are still aluminum structured and skeletoned out. Uh, and that ends up saving a lot of weight. It does add some cost. So that's kind of one of the offsets there. Every RV's greatest asset is its greatest liability. And I think that's true of people too. Um, uh, you know, like I never shut up, <laughs> but I also provide a lot of information as a result. So there you have it. Now, by default, this has no factory solar, but you can get it uh, with their camp freedom package. I, I can never remember what Crossroads calls their solar package, but it's dual 190 watt solar panels. So pretty close to 400 watts of solar uh, and a 2000 watt inverter. It doesn't have any sort of battery action and it's not going to run your air conditioner. But remember, there's a bunch of inverter prepped outlets that will suddenly become live off battery power. And you still have a portable solar plug that you could expand on that, you know, as needed and park in the shade and chase the sun. Uh, again, I'm not mad at the fact that this entry door doesn't have a window because we still have a window for cross breeze and viewing in the bedroom, but it allows you to easily maximize privacy. And both entry doors are encompassed under that awning. And what I really want to draw your attention to as we walk past this tankless water heater over here that I'm going to conveniently mention offhand, uh, <laughs> is the fact that this entry door, notice how well covered it is by the awning. So even on a rainy day, for the most part, you're still not going to be really getting spritzed in the face. Now, in terms of like insulation type stuff, they have what they call their extreme weather package. Well, well, it seems like every manufacturer uses that. It's, it's a fairly industry standard, fairly common package, but it's not bad stuff that they're doing. The underbelly is enclosed. It is forced air heated. They also do use a uh, radiant barrier layering through the RV to help kind of trap and, and capture the hot air, cold air, where you want it, when you want it kind of thing. You know what I mean? So uh, that that is a good thing they're doing there. Now, like I said, the underbelly is enclosed. You have four corner power stabilizer jacks, power awning, power tongue jack, um, and the roof ladder to get you up that fully walkable roof, which is great. But you may actually want a, a little one, two step stool to bring with you, unless you got long legs like mine. Like I can step on the bumper, then step on that tire and, uh, you know, clamber my way up there but not as convenient and easy for everybody. So maybe bank that one in the memory bank. Ugh, I'm an idiot. So overall, just taking this RV on its own merits, what do you think about this one? And what I'll also do is leave some links in the video description where not only will you be able to check for pricing and availability, which you can also do with this big old QR code next to me that hopefully I remember to put into the video, but also um, you can, uh, see some links to like the cougar version of this uh like the imagine the other builders of a similar type of floor plan maybe watch one or two of those let me know which one you would go with and why on any of the videos i can see the comments no matter where you leave them so until next time take care stay safe have fun stay nerdy everyone <laughs> i like that one
Thank you.